Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we will learn about foraminas of the skull and structures passing through various foraminas with the help of mnemonics. Hence you can memorize it very easily and for long duration. This is the anterior view of the skull and when we removed both the parietal bone, we entered into the cranial cavity of the skull. Inside the cranial cavity, there lies brain which comprises of brainstem. Brainstem is formed of medulla oblongata, pons and midbrain. All these three, as you can see in the figure, that is midbrain, pons and medulla oblongata, gives origin to various cranial nerves and this cranial nerves along with arteries and veins passes through the foraminas of the skull. This is how the skull look from the transverse section and when we rotate it, we find the inferior or basal view of the skull, which is also known as norma basalis. Hence, we have to recognize every foraminas of the skull, both from the transverse and basal view. The first foramina is the superior orbital fissure. The structures passing through superior orbital fissure are the third, fourth, fifth and sixth cranial now among which the third one is the oculomotor nerve, fourth one is the trochlear nerve, fifth one is actually the trigeminal ganglion, but trigeminal ganglion before entering into the foraminas divide itself into three main branches, out of which the first branch that is the ophthalmic nerve passes through superior orbital fissure, along with it the sixth cranial nerve that is abducent nerve passes too, along the superior orbital fissure. It also gives passage to various arteries and veins which can be learned with the help of mnemonic list, among which T is of no use. L stands for lacrimal artery, I stands for inferior ophthalmic vein, S stands for superior ophthalmic vein. When we rotate the skull and find the anterior view of the skull, this is how the superior orbital fissure will be seen in the orbit of the eye. And above the superior orbital fissure, there lies optic canal. Optic canal gives passage to various nerves and arteries. Second cranial nerve, that is the optic nerve, and ophthalmic artery with sympathetic plexus passes along the optic canal. This figure shows both the optic canal and superior orbital fissure. The third foramina is the foramina rotundum and when we magnify it, we come to know that it just lies below the superior orbital fissure. In this figure, we get a comparative view of foramen rotundum both from the transverse and basal aspect of the skull. The structures passing through foramen rotundum are the second division of the trigeminal ganglion that is the fifth cranial nerve which is the maxillary nerve and E stands for emissary vein. Besides foramen rotundum, we find an oval shaped foramina which is known as foramen oval. This is the basal view of foramen oval and foramen oval gives passage to male structures where M stands for mandibular nerve which is the third branch of the trigeminal ganglion, that is the fifth cranial nerve. A stands for accessory middle meningeal artery. L stands for lesser petrosal nerve. And E stands for emissary vein. Behind foramen oval, we find a small tiny dot-like foramina, which is foramen spinosum. It is the smallest foramina. This is the magnified view of foramen spinosum and this is the basal or inferior view of the foramen spinosum. Foramen spinosum gives passage to man's structures where MA stands for middle meningeal artery and NS stands for nervous spinosus. Besides all these foraminas, laterally, Sorry, medially there lies foramen lesrum. 
Foramen lestrum is present medially to all the foramina of the skull and this is the basal view of the foramen lestrum. It gives passage to Maggi structures. Here the spelling is different but in order to remember it easily this goes very perfect. Where M stands for meningeal branch of ascending pharyngeal artery, E stands for emissary vein, G stands for greater petrosal nerve and I stands for internal carotid artery with sympathetic plexus. In this figure, we will have a comparative view of all the foramina we have looked recently. You can remember them with the mnemonic rose, where instead of E, you have to replace it with L. The first, that is R, stands for foramen rotundum. The second foramen is the foramen oval. Behind foramen oval, there lies foramen spinosum and medially to all the foramina, there lies foramen lestrum. Also, behind all these foramina, we find a canal through which internal carotid artery passes and so thus it is called as carotid canal. We also spot internal acoustic meatus and through internal acoustic meatus, 7th and 8th cranial nerve passes, among which the 7th is the facial nerve and 8th is the vestibulocochlear nerve. We also find stylomastoid foramina present on the basal view of the skull and stylomastoid foramina gives passage to 7th cranial nerve that is the facial nerve. But remember one thing that through internal acoustic meatus, the seventh cranial nerve enters and through stylomastoid foramina, the seventh cranial nerve exists. Then we have jugular foramina, which is one of the broadest foramina in the posterior cranial fossa. This is the transverse view of the jugular foramina that is from the transverse section of the skull. The various structures passing through jugular foramina can be learned under the mnemonic JF that is jugular foramina is 9th, 10th and 11th where I stands for inferior petrosal sinus, S stands for sigmoid sinus. 9th, 10th and 11th are the cranial nerves which passes through jugular foramina but one thing to be noticed here is that the ninth cranial nerve, that is the glossopharyngeal nerve, has an independent sheet of dura mater surrounded to it, whereas the tenth and eleventh cranial nerve, that is vagus and accessory nerve, has the common sheet of dura mater around it. Also remember that the cranial root of the accessory nerve passes through jugular foramina whereas the spinal root of the accessory nerve passes through foramen magnum. Then we have hypoglossal canal which is located anteriorly to the foramen magnum. This is the lateral view of the hypoglossal canal and through hypoglossal canal the 12th cranial nerve that is the hypoglossal nerve passes. Then we have one of the biggest foramina that is foramen magnum. The foramen magnum is divided into two compartments that is the anterior and posterior compartment. Posterior compartment gives a passage to medulla oblongata along with the meninges. That is medulla oblongata along with meninges enters the foramen magnum in the posterior compartment whereas in the anterior compartment a pical ligament of tense upper longitudinal band of cruciform ligament and membrana tectoria are attached. Also, in the posterior compartment, various arteries and nerves are also present, which can be remembered with the mnemonic 11th P2A1V, where 11th S stands for spinal root of 11th cranial nerve, that is the accessory nerve, P2 stands for posterior spinal artery, which are two in number. A1 stands for anterior spinal artery, which is one in number. And V stands for vertebral artery, which are obviously two in number. 
I will be posting another video where we will have a quick revision of all the cranial nerves passing through various foramina. And thank you so much for watching this video. Please do like, share and subscribe to my channel.